Mount Carmel evokes the last part of a complex of heights that constitute a mountainous range in the Holy Land, today known as Israel. The range is 25 kilometers long and 12 kilometers in width, with a maximum height of 564 meters. It is ploughed with valleys and has an area of 150 square kilometers. It is situated north of the Haifa Bay. To the south, it confines with the land of Caesarea east with the plain of Esteron and Saron, and west with the Mediterranean. The rocks are limestone, and this has permitted the formation of numerous caves. Even if the ground is not suitable due to the height, the fertility of the Carmel refers to the spontaneous vegetation due to the abundant dew present especially in summer. Maybe this is the reason for the meaning of the word Carmel, garden. In references regarding the biblical world, Mount Carmel is always considered as a sign of grace, of blessing and of beauty because of its rich vegetation. In this, one can see the place of the renewal of alliance and of the interventions made by God and through the prophet Elias, of whose movements and memories the mountain is rich. During the period of the Third Crusade, with the presence of the Carmelites, the Carmel also became a place of worship to Maria. The rising of the Carmelite order is connected to a group of Christians that came from Europe who established themselves on Mount Carmel towards the end of the 12th century. In the medieval, there was the Societas Christiana, that is, a society in which the world consisted in the body and the church, the soul. During the 12th and 13th centuries, this Christian society was tormented by a deep transformation that collided with the feudal system of that time. In this period, amongst the ferment that favors the Christian life, there is the appeal for an effective solitude and a separation of the activities above all temporal. The simplicity of life as chosen calls for the research of solitary places and determines a movement called Hermitism, which expressed itself in that period in its own way and with its own characteristics. The Hermits towards the end of the medieval and during the rising of the new age lived individually or in groups bound to monastery or even as independents they followed or did not follow the monastery laws that orientated the hermits lives another way to express the conversion in that period was the pilgrimage the pilgrim lived as well as living poverty mendicancy and wandering but also immigration Hermits established themselves in various Palestinian localities during the Crusades in the Holy Land and therefore there was a wide expansion of religious hermitism. During the Third Crusade, a new group of Latin hermits established themselves on Mount Carmel. This group was certainly formed of penitents, hermits and pilgrims who took on the spiritual way of life of that time. Giacomo de Vitri, Bishop of Acre in 1216, talked about the expansion of religious life in the Holy Land and of the Carmelites on Mount Carmel during the Crusades, besides holy men renouncing the world and lit by the fervency of religious life, they chose, according to various preferences and desires, the most adaptable places for their intentions and for their devotion. Others, imitating the example of the holy man and solitary prophet Elias, lived as hermits on Mount Carmel, which rises near the city of Porphyria and Haifa, close to the source named after Elias. They lived in solitude, each on his own, in caves similar to beehives, where, like bees, they produced the holy honey of the spiritual sweetness. At the beginning of the charismatic experience, there is a deep correlation with Elias through the place chosen to live on Mount Carmel that establishes, because of the mentality of that period, almost a physical contact with the Prophet. For the pilgrim that visited the Holy Land, 
Mount Carmel was the place where Elias lived, conducted his hermit life and passed part of his life. The name Elias means Javeh is my God. This is the name of the prophet that defended fearlessly the Javis religion against Ahab and Jezebel, promoters of the idolatrous cult in Baal. The adventures of this stern and ardent prophet had such an impact amongst the population that legendary tales were created about him. Elias is a solitary prophet that cultivates the thirst of one God and lives in his presence. He is the contemplative wrapped by burning passion for the absolute God, of whom the word burnt like a torch. He is the mystic that after a long and strenuous walk learns to read the signs of the presence of God. He is the prophet that is involved in the life of the people and fighting against false idols brings them back to the fidelity of the alliance with one God. He is the prophet united with the poor and the distant and defends those who suffer violence and injustice. From Elijah, the Carmelite learns to be a man of the desert with an indivisible heart for God, dedicated to the service of God, a man that made a choice without compromises for the cause of God and for God burning with passion. Like Elias, he believes in God and he lets himself be conducted by the Spirit and by the word he has in his heart to testify the divine presence in the world, accepting that he is really God in his life. The Carmelite sees in Elias the brotherhood experienced in the community and with him he learns to be the channel of God's tenderness towards the poor and the humble. In this way, the Carmelite looks at the great prophet as his maestro and his model for inspiration. Maria, the mother of Jesus, the mother of the Lord of the land and therefore the Lady of the land, that takes care of her son's servants in need. The most ancient icon is a board portraying Saint Mary of the Carmen, called La Bruna that is venerated in the Basilica of the Carmine Maggiore in Naples. A pious tradition tells us that the Carmelites brought it with them, leaving Mount Carmel during a phase of transmigration to Europe. The choice of the Marian patronage is characterized through the dedication to Mary in the first church on Mount Carmel. The title of the Marian order was already diffused towards the middle of the 13th century. In the Virgin Mary, Mother of God and of the Church, the Carmelites find a perfect image of everything they desire and hope to be. This is why Mary has always been considered the patron of the order, of which she is also called Mother and Dignity and that the Carmelites have always seen as the purest Virgin. Looking at her and living a spiritual life closely with her, we learn to stay in front of God and together as brothers of God. In fact, Mary lives amongst us, as a mother and as a sister, attentive to our needs, and together with us she waits, hopes, suffers and rejoices. Through the centuries, the Marian of the Carmel devotion is expressed with an attitude of interwoven love, of tender and familiar sweetness, of harmony and similarity with Mary and imitating her virtues. It is impossible to talk about this Marian devotion without remembering the scapula, as for many centuries the order has seen symbolized in this and its relationship with Mary, its consecration to her and the special protection. The scapula is connected to a venerable tradition of the order, the vision of Saint Simon Stock, diffused at the end of the 14th century. According to this tradition, the Madonna appeared to the saint holding the scapula and promising him and his monks that whoever died wearing it would be saved.
This historical truth of this version has been discussed and is still discussed. At present, the most widespread amongst the studios affirms that it is non proven that this vision is false, but the proof given for its authenticity is not satisfactory. Another promise connected to the scapula and approved by the Church is the so called Sabatino privilege, with the liberation of the devoted to Maria as soon as possible from the purifying flames of purgatory. The diffusion of the devotion to the scapula amongst the believers starting from the 16th century was extensive, and still today it is amongst the most diffused Marian devotions in the world. The scapula, this way, helped as an instrument to extend the Carmelite family outside the circle of friars and nuns, with an extensive gathering of the other parties and of the scapula confraternity members. As a sign of membership to the Carmel, the scapula is also a sign of belonging to Maria to express the devotion to this mother and the gathering of the followers to the Carmelite family. It expresses the conviction of the member to live consecrated to Mary and under her protection. It reminds whoever uses it the commitment to live their own Marian dimension that is characterized in a life of similarity with Mary in prayer, humility, and imitation of her virtues, inviting the intimate union with God and to the generous duty of fellow man and of the Church. With her maternal love, Mary takes care of her son's brothers still pilgrims in the middle of danger and difficulties until they reach their celestial father. The scapula, so intense, defines for us the maternal spirituality of Mary who protects life, saves during death and intervenes after death.